What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the Home Theater Hobbies, and today I have another home theater topic for you. Basically, it's a basic series. How do you connect a powered tower to your AV receiver to get the best bass performance? Now, this is the Definitive Technology BP9060. It is a powered tower. It's a part of their BP9000 series, and I actually just did a review on this one, and I'll put a link to that in the card up above. But like I said, it's a power tower or powered floor standing speaker. And what that means is it has three major drivers built in. It has a tweeter, a mid range driver, and a sub woofer. And a lot of people kind of gravitate towards this type of speaker so they don't have to buy a separate sub woofer. But if you don't connect it right, you may not be getting the base performance that you were expecting. So in this video, I wanna talk about the different connection options and also how I recommend you connect it so you can get the best base performance out of your new power tower. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into this, but I will be using this BP9060 as an example piece. What I'm gonna say in this video should be applicable to pretty much any power tower out there, but I just wanted to say that up front. Now, first things first, how do you know if you have a powered tower or a powered floor standing speaker? Well, basically you can check your owner's manual or look on your manufacturer's website for your model and see if it says anything about having an active subwoofer. Another way and maybe an even easier way is to check the back panel of your speaker. If you have speaker level connections like these, but you also have a power connection like the one that's right down here, that means you have an active subwoofer in there because subwoofers need more amplification to drive them than you can get from just bare speaker wire. Okay, so now that you've established that you have a power connection, obviously you're going to need the power cable that came with your speaker. So if you can't find that, fish it out of the box because you will need a power cable to plug into the back of the speaker and then plug it into the outlet on your wall. But on the back of the speaker, you have all the connections that you need. You have your speaker level connections and most speakers are going to take, you know, banana plug, spade connections, that sort of thing. Right here, I've got a pair of banana plugs and you plug in black with black and red with red. Now these particular speakers also have a height module that you can add to them and that's what these speaker terminals are here. But these are the ones that are here for the speaker so I'm just plugging it in here. Now I've got my speaker level connection made. You plug the other end into your AV receiver. Next to that you have an LFE input and we'll talk about this in a minute with a different option that you can use. Uh, below that you have a volume knob and the volume knob is actually for the subwoofer itself. It turns the volume up and down. So when you're setting your levels for your subwoofers at your main listening position, you're gonna turn the knob or use your remote to turn the volume up on your subwoofer. This does not work for the tweeters or anything else, just the subwoofer on your cabinet. Now the setup I have here using only speaker wire cables and the other end connected to the AV receiver is the first option to set your speakers up. And from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your AV receiver or integrated amplifier for that matter. You're gonna go into the setup menu and you're going to set these speakers to large and you're going to say subwoofer, no, I do not have a subwoofer. Now these settings tell your AV receiver to send all the frequencies from let's say five hertz to 40,000 hertz over your speaker wire to your towers and the internal crossovers inside your towers will figure out which driver should be driven by which frequency. So the high frequencies will go to the tweeter, the mid range frequencies will go to the mid range driver and the bass or low frequencies will go to the subwoofer. Now in my testing with these settings, I found that the sound was just a bit boomy. It lacked detail. So I tried the next option. But before we go to the next option, I should mention this. Once you say subwoofer no in your AV receiver or integrated amplifier, you will need a sound meter like the one I have here or one that you can use on your phone to set the bass levels for your room because you can't use your setup mic at that point. You will need to use a sound meter. So sit at your main listening position with a sound meter app and you wanna set your bass level to somewhere around 75 dB. Okay, so let's talk about the second option. And the second option involves using a subwoofer cable like the one I have here. And you're gonna take that cable and you're gonna plug it into the LFE input on your subwoofer and also in the subwoofer out connection on your AV receiver. Then you're gonna go into your AV receiver's setup menu. You're gonna set the speaker to small and say subwoofer, yes. 
Now, once the settings were like this in my AV receiver, what I found was the bass was a lot more detailed. It was less boomy and it sounded more like I expected it to sound. Now you can go in and you can try these two different methodologies and determine which one you like. Do you like large speakers with no LFE input or do you like the second option using an LFE input and setting your speakers to small? Now, as far as crossover settings are concerned, I would start at 80 hertz and then you can kind of play around with the crossover to determine what you like. Do you want it at 60 hertz? Does that sound the best to you? Do you want it at 40 hertz? Does that sound the best to you? It's totally up to you. Um, but one other thing I should mention is if your AV receiver or integrated amplifier only has one subwoofer out connection, but obviously you have two towers, you're gonna wanna use a Y splitter like the one that I have here. I'll put some uh, links to this in the description below so you can definitely check it out. But if you only have a one subwoofer connection out, you wanna use something like this. Um, and I guess you could use this too if you wanna go with a subwoofer and the subwoofers on your towers as well and do an even more advanced setup. But again, I think you should at least follow this and then you can get a little bit more advanced. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that uh, notification bell so you can be alerted anytime we upload new content. And also use those links in the description below because they do help support the channel. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you next time.